Well, hey, I hope everybody's doing good. I'm back with another tips and tricks video. This video is going to be on how not to get screwed over as an artist, how not to get used. So let's jump right in with number one. Number one, do not work for free. Seriously, I've done it, been there. Uh, you get you get someone who emails you or calls you and they have this great deal, this great exposure. That's the, one of the key words you need to watch out for is exposure. Uh, they tell you how great this deal is going to be. You go do it and it's not so great and you just ended up giving away your time for free. So do not work for free. Now I'm not saying you can't be charitable. I'm not saying you can't be a nice person. But just understand that not all charities are good. Not all charities are real. So one of the things I started doing years ago, and I stick to, is I don't care who it is, I don't care who the charity is, I tell them I will not work for free, but I will work for a slightly reduced hourly rate, and I encourage them to find someone to sponsor my fee, it, whether it's a company, a local business, and usually they can find someone if they really want to have you there. Um, I still get paid. That company gets they get exposure because they get their logo put pre-printed on my paper and you know everybody's happy and they still got their charitable uh, contribution. It's not that I don't have a heart, it's not that I'm just this evil person, it's because uh, there's, so many, there's so many out there that try to take advantage of this. Hey, come work for free, it's great exposure. It's, it's not great exposure if you can't pay your bills. So I don't work for free. Uh, get some get I get someone someone somewhere to pay me or I pass on the event and it's you know it's worked well uh, I try to be charitable in other, in other ways other places in my life I try to give to um, you know without getting into any specifics because I don't want to promote any specific charities but I try to be charitable in other events when I get things in the mail I look at them and if it's something I want to give to I make a contribution uh, when it comes to my caricature services uh, that is my livelihood, and that's what I do for a living, so I don't do it for free. Number two, whenever you get a phone call, a lot, I know a lot of people do everything through email and text messages nowadays, but sometimes you still get a phone call from someone, and they'll, they'll discuss all these things over the phone. Always follow up with a written email with the specifics of the event. Um, that way you have something in writing. Uh, eventually, you're going to get to, we'll get to contracts in a minute, but at the very least you need to have something in writing that says hey you know what you're going to do what you're doing for the person what the charges are for and be specific i've made the mistake before a uh, real quick example a while back i had a gentleman who wanted me to come to his house to talk about designing his wedding uh, wedding wedding invitations and i didn't tell him you know ahead of time hey you know if you do, if there's gonna be a consult fee. I didn't tell him that. So I showed up and I thought this was gonna be a done deal. You know, we we're gonna sit down, we we're gonna talk about it, and I was gonna take pictures and go home and design it. Well, come to find out, he just wanted a consultation. So upon leaving, I'm like, okay, I'm, I need a $50 uh, consult fee for driving out here. And he got furious and he's like, get out of my house. I'm like, okay, cool, no deal, no, no problem. And I left because in retrospect, you know, whenever we communicated, we communicated over the phone. There was never an email exchanged, and there again, I, everything wasn't communicated with him. Uh, that was as much my fault as it actually was. It was my fault because I didn't specify those things. So just just be wary of when you're dealing with people uh, to always be concise and be spell out what you need for money wise and er everything. Spell it out and do it through an email. That way you have it in writing. Number three. Uh, this brings me to contracts. I always have a contract. Have a contract or some type, of, and I hate to use the word contract because it's not really a legal contract as much as it is just a written agreement of what you're going to do. Uh, and real quickly, both signatures, yours and theirs. You sign it, send it to them, have them read over it and sign it that says that they agree and they send it back to you because if you just have them sign it, then you know where, where's your, where's your uh, stake in the game? Make sure it's both parties. That way it's holding you liable for what you should do and them liable for what they're supposed to do. Um, some things that need to be in the contract. Your starting and stop time if you're working at an event. If you're doing a, an illustration or a, you know something from a photo, 
you know, the scope of what you're doing, the size of it, the, you know, is it in color, when you, when, when's the expected delivery date, all those good things. You need to have all your specifics um, in there, anything you can think of. Try to, try to be as thorough as you can. Uh, logistics, if you're, especially if you're in an event, you know, um, and I'll put, and I'll put a link to my, one of my blank contracts at the bottom. My logistics, I specify, do not put me in front of a loudspeaker. Make sure I have chairs. Make sure I have adequate space. Make sure I'm protected from the elements if I'm outside, and if, if and it's their responsibility. If you're working an outdoor event and you know it pours down rain and they don't have a tent for you and you can't work, you know it's you make sure that they understand that they're responsible for you having uh, protection from the elements. And if they don't have it, you know, then there's that way they can't say, well, hey, it's raining. You can't work. We don't pay you. Make sure that, th make sure that stuff's specified. Uh, and have an overtime procedure. I put that in my contract, um, especially for weddings and things. You know, if they contract you for three hours and, you know, into three hours, you've got 50 people in line. Uh, you know, what should you do? Should you go ahead and close your line down? Should you go ahead and stay for another specified amount of time that they pre-approve? Or should you find the hostess or person who hired you first? Uh, put all that in there. That way, there's no misunderstandings. Um, I've, I've heard stories of artists who stayed overtime at an event because they thought it would be okay or because, you know, somebody will come over and say, yeah, it's okay. And, you know, and it was just some drunk, drunk uncle or cousin that had nothing to do with the wedding and you stay another hour like no we didn't have a budget to pay you another hour and guess what you're not getting paid dude so yeah make sure that's all covered in your contract number four uh, on a lot of contracts or in anything that you're doing get a non-refundable deposit um, for a live event that way if they cancel if they move the event date or whatever and you don't get contacted you know you've got something it's you know it's you may not necessarily be able to, to book something else, but you've got something that covers at least, you know, and it can act as a kill fee, act as a kill fee on illustration. If you spend time on a, a layout sketch for someone and they don't like it, you've got something for your time. Number five, beware of tryout requests. I don't get them as much anymore, but earlier on when I was a newer, newer artist or younger, I used to get these people who would call me or email and they would say, you know what, I want to send... You know, we want to do 20 caricatures for our staff to go to give as gifts for Christmas. Will you do one for free as a tryout to to see what your work looks like? And I tell, and of course, back in the day, I would do that. But and and sometimes it worked out, and sometimes it didn't. But here's the deal: if you're established, if you have a website and you have samples, they can look at your samples and they can see, you know, basically what your style is. And if they want you now, I understand if they're if they're investing, you know, a lot of money and a lot of work from you, I can understand wanting to kind of get an idea of a sample. So this is what I tell them. Yes, I'll be happy to do that with pay. So so here's the deal. Let's say they want to commission you to do uh, 35 caricatures at you know fifty dollars a head. That's quite a bit of money. Well, I'll say sure, I'll I'll do one for you know the same rate, fifty dollars, and. That you know, because there's no reason you should have to work for free. That goes back to number one: don't do work for free. Because what if you know? What if they're doing? What if they're reaching out to like you know 30 different artists and doing that? And then they end up getting their whole project done for free. You know, and if some of the caricatures aren't good, they can. You know, there's 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 sleazy people in this world. Most people are good. Most people are not out to screw you over. I'm that's not what I'm saying at all. But they are people who do not value your time. And that's, you know, that's kind of the whole reason for this list to begin with. Uh, number six, stick to your prices. And on prices, I'm not going to tell you how much to charge because, you know, I don't know where you're at experience-wise. I don't know where you're at, um, how much you think an hour of your time's worth. I know what an hour of my time is worth. I know what I charge. Uh, so I print those prices out, and they're beside, right beside my... Um, my desk when the phone rings I can you know if I ever in doubt I can look right over there at my price sign I know what I charge for caricature I know what I charge for live events I know what I charge an hour for illustration and anytime I give someone a quote on anything I can look at my hourly rate and I can give an estimate and I'm usually pretty close in uh, what price I give someone so with everything uh, stick to your prices that brings me to number seven uh, beware of the 
simple gig and that's the that's where you get the phone call or email or whatever and they say hey I just need a simple little quick little thing done when they start using that kind of terminology that usually means they want a quick and simple little cheap price too and what I have found with those is most of the time it ends up being anything but uh, a lot of times those end up being some of the most demanding pain in the ass customers you've ever dealt with so uh, stick to your prices I don't care how simple how quick and how easy they thought they think it is uh, you know what you need to get paid and you stick to your prices and don't be afraid to let work walk away I quote somebody they get a price if they don't like it they keep looking uh, we do live in a we do live in a, a world now that people think that everything is free and everything is cheap. They get on things like Fiverr, and you know they get these whatever. I, I hate those websites because I, I feel like they're they're ruining the uh, ability for people to make money in a lot of ways. A lot of illustrators I've struggled very hard. Uh, still haven't made it as an illustrator. Uh, do caricatures because I, I think people have, there's no way they can cheat that. There's no way they can they can get that for for you know uh, for nothing. So that that's honestly quite honestly that's why I've stuck with caricatures as my primary income uh, because it you know people will pay for that. But when it comes to illustration, when it comes to children's books, uh, you know everybody wants to make a children's book, but nobody wants to pay someone to illustrate it. They they think it's supposed to be you know ten dollars a drawing. I, I don't understand that. But sorry to get off on a rant, but you know, it's just the way it is. Well, hey, as always, I hope this video helps you. Um, a lot of this comes from experience. A lot of this comes from mistakes I've made. Be sure to give it a like, give it a thumbs up, uh, comment, let me know anything I missed, what you agree with, what you disagree with. Um, as always, give me some uh, feedback on what you'd like to see in some future videos. And you guys be safe out there and try not to get screwed over. <laughs> see you later.